Hello guys and welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bemsters Podcast. Today we're going to be discussing with you upcoming games on the 3rd of June. That's when we're going to release the episode. Um, this is episode uh, 206 and uh, today joining me to discuss the indie games coming out on the scene in June is uh, G. G, say hi. Sorry, hi. <laughs> ah, thank you. <laughs> Please, please don't take the leaf out of uh, Jack's book and just go all freaking, you know, full art hard and, and go, please, just, just, hello. Hey, Bam, how are you? Hey, Bam, how are you? you? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I knew I pushed the bear too much there. <laughs> right, we'll just get straight into it then, because <laughs> this is just getting us nowhere. Right, so guys, so we've picked out hello, 10 Bam. games. It's 11. Oh, God. <laughs> we've picked out 10 games. There's 11 games this, um, this time around. <laughs> and uh, the first one on the chopping block comes on the 4th of June and it is uh, The Wizards Dark Times this is a VR game obviously and uh, it looks pretty slick for a VR title G well, your thoughts it's a sequel to The Wizards <laughs> yeah okay I'll let you have that yeah um, and I mean they've the past one, I impressions. You impressions. You haven't played the game. Impressions. Yeah, no, what the, are your impressions? The, the previous one looked good, but I didn't like. Oh yeah, it did. The, the, one of those where you go, oh, this could make and break VR, and then you saw the movement and how it was played. But yeah, nope. This, this is not a platform maker. But this sequel actually looks like they fixed some of that. So I'm sorry. Of... It, it it looks it looks very slick. Now when I say it's an HD Skyrim, doesn't do it any justice. It really doesn't. I'm still not a fan of the of the way they make the VR games where they chop off the arm. But I understand why they do that because it gives you like a, a visual sort of discrepancy of where the video game shows your arm to be and where your arm is in the yeah. real world. It gives you that sort of discrepancy and that apparently is an issue for players. But from what I've seen, the game looks cool. It's got a relatively good um, a good following and it's the sequel. And it looks like fun. And it's here because Drake has a VR set. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Drake can go play it. Because uh, I did pick this game for Drake. Yes, I did the list this time, guys. <laughs> so it's it's basically PC Master Race only. <laughs> no, it's um, the thing that really caught my eye. Uh, the trailers are really well done. Sounds Very like slick. a weird thing, but um, they threw some money at that one. Threw some effort at that one. Yeah, yeah, they did. And... and from what I can see, it's all video game footage of actual game players. Like, shit. Shit, dude. I actually might want to go get me a PC and actually play this game because of it. Nah. Give give me give me 1,500 quid and I'll put together a system for you. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I'm keen for that. I'm keen for that. So. So anyway, enough about Wizards of the Dark Times. Okay, the Wizards Dark Times, rather. It's out on the 4th of June, 2020, Tomorrow. obviously, and it looks like a lot of fun to play. Drac, go get the game, review it. Put a review out there, Drac. That's on you now, dude. Obviously, the second game is uh, not necessarily an indie title. It is a remaster, and we have to mention it, which is why there's 11 games. This one, because I'm a big, big fangirl of Command & Conquer. And as you guys know, 5th of June is Command & Conquer Remastered. Obviously, the original Command & Conquer and Red Alert. I cannot get enough of Red Alert. I'm currently playing like a... Like a, like a back hack version of some website that I downloaded. Now I get to buy an HD version with upgraded high definition bits and pieces rather than the 8-bit freaking character models. And I'm all over that. I, I'm going to be buying it. I, I don't need <laughs> much more incentive. <laughs> this seems to be the remastered. I, I'm, I'm, at least I'm hoping because um, Blizzard have remastered some of their games as well, right? And they were... A uh, fluster cluck, putting it politely, and a lot of stuff that they showed in trailers didn't actually happen in the game as well. So I'm hoping, I am genuinely hoping, this is uh, how you actually do a remaster collection. You just upgrade the characters <laughs> and, and put the game back out there. <laughs> and to play a high def version of of my favourite. One of my all-time favorite games. I'm, I'm there. I'm so there. So there. It's, always, it's even got the, the, the console bonus packs. I mean, come on. Come on. I'm there, bro. I'm so there. 
So there. So there. Well, it does say Westwood Studio team members, or former Westwood Studio team members. So people yes, know what I they're doing. Too. But that actually, um, that brings up something mean much. of a complaint from my side. Because, yeah, your Command & Conquer Red Alert, but I'm... My game was um, the one just before it. Just come on and conquer. Nope. Before them. June 2. You, oh, you're talking about Dune. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Which yeah, is getting yeah, a new yeah. movie. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, dude. I tell you what. They should actually do a remastered version of Dune. I did play Dune. Dune 2. But Dune 2, not the first. Oh, well, Dune 2, Dune, whatever. Same difference, no, same it's game. It's very, very different. J Dune 1 has nothing to do with Dune 2, except it's the same no, title. No. It's, it's awesome. A complete <laughs> different genre. No, okay, look, I I'll give you that. What I'm trying to say is that the gameplay is similar because you've got to go harvest Tiberium or gold or jewels, whereas spice. in Dune, you, you end to go harvest the spice. Yeah. And it's eerily similar sort of because mechanics. Because Dune you know? 2 was the basis for Command & Conquer. Okay, I'll let you have that as well. Yes, Still so Westwood quite Studios. Right. Quite, quite right, quite right. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of history behind Command & Conquer Raid Alert. And... I joke! Shush! Sorry, that's my dog. He sees snoring. And um, he's... He's snoring. <laughs> it's... I don't, I can't think of any facts offhand, but I can go and I can do some research and I can tell you about it because it's a lot interesting how um, Command and Conquer and then Red Alert just completely shaped the whole sort of um, RTS sort of game. And then for me, the definitive RTS um, was uh, StarCraft. That, for me, that's it. StarCraft was it. I loved StarCraft. That's fun. You know, not World of Warcraft, StarCraft. And it wasn't necessarily any StarCraft, StarCraft 2. I loved StarCraft 2. That was a good game. They're not the only RTSs, and Dune 2 was not the first uh, RTS. I, but I, I, I know. Yeah, I know. that's that's yeah. the stepping stone to what become the genre-defining games, Command Conquer and Red Alert. Yeah, although they're, they're, love them, love them. I was I was young, and I used to run around with my little soldier shooting big ass tanks. Great, great. Anyway, guys, moving swiftly on. Evans remains 11th of June. G, this is this is you. What what is this game? Is this me? Um, this is you, isn't it? Do you know what? I, I I spent some time looking at it to try and figure out, is this me? Um, this is you, dude, isn't it? Well, it's, it's a platform puzzler. It's um, one yes. of those, uh, there's a mystery afoot that you need to figure out. Because Evan disappeared, and then suddenly he sends a letter to a girl and says, come and find me. It, it reminded me of Hugh. Uh, that sort of, that sort of, that sort of... I know she's jumping around a bit like... You, there's a platform a bit, puzzling the, thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, remi it, it reminded me of Hugh. But right? um, the, uh, the story and the storytelling seems to be very different. This one has a very strong um, inspiration <laughs> f uh, from Japanese, both the animation, the uh, character yes, designs, yes. And the story as well. So there I think we should more compare it to that. Well, you see, this is this is the point I, I I try to make earlier on to drag is that when you want me to review Japanese anime games, they're the wrong kind of Japanese anime games. <laughs> if you catch my drift, mm. but Evans remains, I think, the right sort of style because she's now going to look for Evan, yeah. and Evan, from what I'm gathering, being Evans remains, is dead. Well, he's, and he's something now, at he's least. He's telling her a story through the letter. I I'm assuming, I haven't played the game, it looks like a lot of fun, but I think it's going to be one of them, it looks light and pretty. Check my oh, him. yeah. It looks light and pretty, but it has a, a very somber undertone, if you know what yeah. I mean. Um, and I think the why Hugh, since you mentioned that, was a fit for me was because of how the story was told and the voice acting yes. was yes. gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. Hugh is a good game. You need to play yeah. it. Seriously, Whereas this, if you get a chance to play Hugh, play it. This is good game, the man. style of it, the, the design, both visually and story-wise, doesn't particularly interest me. Um, it, it's pretty. It's just not necessarily for me, and it's more up Bam's alley. Well, fair enough, fair enough, right. Right, again, on the 11th of June, main assembly goes into early access. We actually interviewed these guys. Mm -hmm. Well, we interviewed right. Mike. Well, guys, team, Mike is a, you know, it's a team effort, yeah. and because Mike was there, I assume the team 
was there too. You know, the job was done because Mark was there, team effort. Can I just take you know? a moment to say these people, and of course for all of them, should not be releasing. Everything is releasing on June 11th, and there's a few other big things coming on June yeah. 11th, including a certain yeah. presentation. So don't yeah. release on June 11th, people. Um, but no, main assembly. The, the, um, I love the game to bits, except it's coming. It's going into early access. Just to be clear, yeah. it's going out of beta. My beta copy might actually expire now. Yikes! Need to buy the early access. Um, build robots, and it's yeah. the most advanced um, builder that I've seen. A very free form. You just take things and bend them and go. Doo, doo, doo. Now my, now I build a Morgan car. Um, was sort of the thing I keep trying to and failing at, but you can. In very organic build mechanisms, very pretty and straightforward and severely user-friendly. Like, what they've done, they could probably export as a modeler. I'm not joking, it is really good. But then adding it's... in all the physics and the uh, destruction, the way things just fall apart when you crash, or when you not crash, things fell apart for me every so often. Um, I awesome. wouldn't mind seeing these guys getting involved with Kerbal Space Program. Not necessarily it's KSP. I want them to. Um, I would rather see this going into something like um, take E one line, right? Ooh, I know where you're going with this. Carry on. Yeah. So, or for that matter, just E Valkyrie. Just let me build my own spaceship. Yeah. As yeah. pretty as I want, let me just you. sell it. I'm there with you. But I'm there with you, mate. I'm there with and you. And then take it into uh, dog fights. I want a <laughs> dog fight. Main assembly in space. <laughs> it reminds me of that. Um, no, you shut up games where you could add uh, bits into your spaceship. Yeah. And uh, you could fly around skewering uh, people and then roast them in the in the you know the the, the the sun or you could have a massive you know flying fuck you finger <laughs> just cruising around <laughs> with your massive flipping the bird <laughs> I, I could see all of that happening in in um, main assembly and it's like i said it's not for me it wouldn't be how accurate you could build it it's about how to build it efficiently and yet making it look like fun. Yeah, so, and that, that, that's sort of where I, it, it comes that next step for me, because more, the more things you pile on, the heavier things get. And uh, I, I love to play with center of mass, center of gravity, center of thrust in Kerbal yeah. Space Program and build things that are not stable, because they're the funniest, and you can do this in main assembly. That reminds me of the uh, Valkyrie video we did. We Somehow, somehow you managed to fly a real life incarnation oh. of the Valkyrie ships. A Kerbal <laughs> Space Program incarnation. So, yeah, <laughs> they were so not. <laughs> they were so not aerospace stable. <laughs> we, we, tr we tried things like taking off from the ground, and it was no, that did not we're, go. were not happening. <laughs> but also, um, we even something most people don't know, and which Valkyrie doesn't model. Main assembly doesn't have this problem because it doesn't have guns. But guns on a spaceship are actually reaction engines. They work just like a jet engine or a rocket engine. You throw a propellant out, in this case bullets, this ship goes the other way. So you park your ship in space and start firing. <laughs> You're all, you all over the place. Please. Yeah, the, the best part about that is all you have to do is launch a missile. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that's how I think it will happen in the future. Anyway, no, anyway enough about men assembly. No. We interviewed them. If you want to see the interview, yeah. Go watch it because they're a cracking bunch links of lads. Down below. Um, I need to say something. Yeah, the links down below. Yeah. Before you move too far, uh, the guy who actually invented Kerbal Space Program is making a new game with similar mechanics that's sort of in between Main Assembly and uh, Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> so go look up uh, Harvester's well, name. Not and I think he's calling the game uh, Balsa Wood Airplanes or something like that. Like you're you're making model planes out of balsa wood in the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. That's very slick. That's very slick. Right. Moving on. Prison Architect. Island Bound. It's a DLC. Yes. Okay. But Prison Architect is like one of those games where everyone who's everyone, even me, I never bought the game, never played it. But my God, 
the podcast they did on 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 development and it's playing good. the game were more for me were more interesting than actually playing the game themselves. Um, game's good. So yeah. Oh, dude, the game's very good. Yeah, I play and Pen- the amount Pen- of Pen- you can get up with is crazy. Yeah, I can't figure out what uh, <laughs> what the idea is with Island Bound. It's a DLC that adds an island. Um, no, I think what it is is restricting your your. I think what it is it's just restricting your resources. It's restricting where you can build, and it's also influencing how you build your structure. So you can't exactly build a, a concrete freaking cell on water you've got a freaking basic you got to pull the water away and build the bedrock so, up. so it's, it's it's limiting how you can build and what you can build and where you can build in it. the original you could just buy more land as you've got more money so you can yep. just build out um but here's yep. the thing prison architect was sort of the um the poster child for a successful indie game like these guys yes, have made really was. i think five or six games before that good games various degree of success but prison architect made more money than all of them put together times yeah. five or something yeah it did it did i know the second attempt or the the, the second after they published uh, prison architect yeah. and they do those they made a second game and that didn't do well, that was second, as well like seventh game is that they made i think five or six before prison architect okay well prison architect was done very well yeah. they constantly updated i think it was every week they updated and every month they had a video every week they had a video and every month they had like a like an all-encompassing video. It was, it was it was so interesting. It really really was interesting watching how they would build and then rectify bugs. Excuse me, in the game, it was it was a lot of fun watching those those but podcasts. Right. They did. With the game that came afterwards, they went VR and they went sort of very special. And everybody was just expecting them to do. You know, they'd done prison architect. How about airport architect, hospital architect? But they didn't want to. No. Nah. It didn't work. It didn't work. Right, moving swiftly on from the Prison Architects, good game, is moving on to Space Scavengers. They're coming to early access and they're out on the 12th of June. Again, another set of indie devs that we interviewed. And these guys are a lot of fun. A lot of Not fun. from Red Cabin in Sweden because that's where they go yeah. to make their games. Yeah. <laughs> in a red cabin deep in the woods. Yeah. Just the two of them. Just, just the two of us. We can do it if we try. Yeah. Just oh, the two I can come up with so many terrible jokes. I'm not gonna make. Space Gaming is <laughs> actually now we're back to games that where you take things and put them together. Because Space Scavengers, man, is a lot of fun. It's a lot of I'm fun. Gonna say, it reminds me of Kerbal Space Program meets Amigos. Dude, I was so there. I was so there. Amigos, right? Um. They gave me the game, I reviewed it, I streamed it, it was a cracking game, I really, really enjoyed that game. Uh, I think I'm still on the Adios, leaderboards. that was the thing. Amigos was the second. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ad- yes, Adios Amigos was the second one, Adios was yeah. the main, you know, all them stuff. A Cosmic Picnic with the development team. And uh, it reminds me so much of Adios, so much. Yeah. And it's it's a lot of fun, but... Again, like you said, a reaction engine. You bolt a, uh, an off-balance gun on one side of the craft, and you're flying along, and you shoot the gun. It'll either break off and fly into oblivion, or just spin your ship yeah. a million ways from Sunday. So you know, a lot of fun that's there. Fun. A lot that, of fun that, there. That's, that's the interesting yeah. part of space scavengers. Um, sh- it's, it's it's clever game. Yeah. Clever. I think you mentioned clever game. Early access. So it's interesting. The two two games that we interviewed are hitting you know, one day after another, entering early access. Hmm. No, I think it's got more to do with um, the fact that June is is a is a fairly slow. Re- Why oh. is June a slow release month? Because June and July and August are big on events. Nobody releases these months. It's suicide. Well, I, you see, it's. I'm glad they're coming out to early access because they're getting a, a a player base and they can build the community even further, and they can literally get free playtesters. If you think about it. And the free players can tell them, right, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, whatever have you. And they can just build on f- and learn from them because these guys just want to learn. They want to make a good game, these guys. To be honest, a lot of the people we speak to, G, just want to make a good game yeah. and for people to enjoy. As as um, Kitamut said um, from Harper Parasite, if one person buys that game and that one person gets enjoyment from playing that game, he's won. Yeah from one person and I think that's the right attitude to have don't get me wrong 
nobody's going to make a game just for one person to play. You'd love to sell the game to millions of people and then get your revenue from that to then carry on making more games that people enjoy, yeah. which is what they're doing now with Eda no Yami. It's a blind cyborg samurai. <laughs> Dude, it's a kick-ass game from what I've seen. Kick-ass. I've seen some of his development streams. It's kick-ass. And his team, Axe, I'm going to get you on camera. It's, it's a kick-ass game. It's not. I don't know why I'm mentioning it now because this is June's upcoming games. It's just that's well, what it's supposed it to be. Space Cavengers. Just going just. I, I know. Space, the, the developers from Space Cavengers have a similar attitude to Kitamut, and that's what yeah. that's what tied them to me, to him rather, because he just wants to make a game that people like to play. But if I may and if he, say, if the games if the if the game's broken, he wants to know so he can freaking fix it, because he doesn't want to put out a broken game, because then no one will enjoy it if it's broken. And these guys have got the same attitude. Which is why they lock themselves in the cabin in the woods, in the woods, painted red. I'm actually, I'm looking forward to Space Cavenger hitting an actual final release. Well, final, but a 1.0 big release. Because I want to see what these guys come up with next. Because this is their big first solo outing. and Yes, it is. I, I, it is. The, the way they're thinking, outing, I think yeah. there's going to be some interesting games in the future. Well, you actually met them live, didn't you? You actually I went met to the... Them, um, uh, well, yeah. I also met the uh, main assembly people. Yeah, a few, few yeah, of the people yeah, on the yeah. list this month I've actually met. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> We've interviewed a few of these yeah. people as well. It's, it's good to see these people are actually making um, their deadlines and they're actually making the game for release. Yeah. It's it's good to see these these games actually getting released. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. So. I'm happy for that. Moving on, moving on from... Uh, Space Scavengers, unless you've got any more interesting details to tell about that game, Gene. No, I just want to Desperado see your transition. 3. I want to see how you transition from Space Scavenger to the next. Well, Desperados 3. Now, this is a hot topic of contention, right? Desperados 3 reminds me a lot of um, a game I used to play called Army Men when I was a young a young warthog from a company called 3DO. And I love that game. This game reminds me of it. Um, however, the contention is the publisher is THQ Nordic, okay? Not necessarily an indie publisher, uh, but now we're in the developer a. Now we're in double is. A. Sorry? Now we're in double A. Yes, you see... And we're in a company that's, that's that... the contention. Would you consider TH Nordic triple A or triple I? No. Because there's no double A nonsense. This no double A nonsense no, no. is triple A or triple I? Ah, uh, double A. Dude, that's a battery. So it's triple A. <laughs> Fuck, okay, throw that at me. <laughs> but you, you understand, for me, it's black and, it's black and white, you know right? It There's no gray. It's double A or double I. We have little I indie developers. We have big I or triple I indie developers. And we have oh double God, A's. Now, you, now you're subsectioning it. What? It's, it's, it's one or the other. You're, you're subsectioning it. It's one or the other. Yeah, that's, that's T, the thing. T, I, I don't know the agreement uh, Mimi Games have with THQ Nordic. I don't. Um, no, neither, neither do I. Um, and that's the thing. Uh, Mimi Games might very well be independent up until THQ Nordic said, yeah, we will publish it, but you, we won't fund you. Because that's the this new thing where, yeah, they're not funding you up front. Indie publishing is different. Yeah, so whether they're doing I've, that I've, as an indie publishing, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about that. They'll, 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 pop, they'll, they'll fund your development costs for, for bits and pieces, and it's, it's really it, some, some contracts are really broken. Like, we will fund your development, but we get ninety-five percent of the freaking payoff. It's like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. You've only th you've only funded me a hundred thousand dollars, but you're reaping in two million. Yeah. Hang on now, sunshine. Chill, chill, bricks, but bro. Chill, to bricks. You don't get a game. <laughs> well, I tell you what. If that was the case, they've got to find themselves a new contract. You can't be that desperate. You can't be that desperate. Nope. So um, no. there are other other developers out that people wouldn't think of. Calypso, a humble bundle, um, uh, Adult Swim. You know, them are they are proper retro off the wall um, developers you, or publishers rather that you wouldn't have thought to do. And from what I can tell, Humble Bundle is actually pretty good for their their, their, their clients. Yeah. You know, they're, they're pretty good. The Humble but, Bundle. But then I, think I don't only, work with them. I can only see from outside looking in. Humble Bundle, I think, only do co-publishing. But I mean, um, there's things like Hound Pick Games. That's Hound Parasite is a Hound. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hound Pick Games. Yes. Modern Wolf, I'm looking forward to you. 
the the things they're putting out are interesting games. Um, I'm looking forward to see where they're moving. So the whole indie publishing thing is that where you now have publishing in the indie space, and it works because the game developers tend to still be independent. It's not until the later yeah. stages, and particularly around marketing, etc., that they kick in. But I should probably chase some of these companies and ask for interviews so we can get to get in depth with what is indie publishing. Well, that's what I'm thinking. You know, the difference between a AAA and triple I is whether the company is listed on the stock markets. Nah. You see, that's that's my thought. Nah. Because then they're they're they are I want to say solos, but then you know their company's out to make the dollar to please investors. And I don't know much about business, I know. so I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it in the hands of people that can explain it to me. Incidentally, in terms. Bam is like, also like, the. Shut up, you! I know what you're going with this. What? <laughs> I got schooled the other week by by, by, by a company. I got schooled, all right, proper schooled. Uh. <laughs> no, stop, stop, I right? I. I <laughs> no, don't say a thing, because we're not allowed to say a thing just yet. Don't say a thing. <laughs> Good, should we move on to the next game? <laughs> Let's move... <laughs> Dis <laughs> Disintegration, guys, comes out the 16th of June. Again, this is a bit of a topic of contention, because the... Now um, we're well into the publishers... uh, double A and possibly triple A. Double A. I think, I think this is triple I. No. It's not coming from the stables of EA. But it's um, private division, Blazard. dude. But it's d exactly it's div it's it's um it's private division, but but that's private division. It's not. It's the same guys who made Outer Worlds, right? Yeah. No, it's the same yeah, guys and, publishing. No, no, it's sorry, sorry, sorry. It's the same publisher, right? The same publisher but buying Space Worlds, Program, which we already mentioned a few times. Uh, exactly, and they made KSP, and they're not Triple A. No, but here's the thing. They're Triple I. And similar to with the last one. So the previous one was that was THQ Nordic, who were buying up a lot. THQ Nord is one of the biggest companies that are out there. Um, this ki time, Private Division have been... They didn't make Kerbal Space Program. They bought Kerbal Space Program. Let's, let's yes. be clear. They didn't make Outer Worlds. They bought the rights to it. They didn't make Disintegration. They bought the publishing rights to it. Yes. Yeah, they are buying publishing rights and they're sinking money into these games the way a publisher traditionally did. Old style. And then go, yeah, and then we'll market and everything and reap some benefits from it. If V1 Interactive, we can talk about what they see themselves as. They're independent, but they have a publisher dictating things. You see, that's 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 where the relationship between the developer and the publisher needs to be give and take. It needs to be 50-50 regardless of the contract, because if the publisher won't release funds, the developer can't then act on those funds, and if the developers can't have the creative juices flowing, but the publishers want the game to be released, that's where you're going to have problems because there's a deadline to reach, but the developers' juices are flowing and you, they could actually improve, they can actually make a better game, but because of the deadline, the better no, game gets shelved. What are you talking about? Oh, so this is a uh, anthem done right? Is that a fair assessment? <laughs> An unbroken anthem? The, the points I'm trying to make, gee, yes, quite right. Uh, it is... Uh, but having said that, we haven't played the game, so we don't know. Okay. I'm going to say this is heavily inspired by Anthem and uh, Destiny, except uh, well, it seems to be done proper. Well, you see, the, the, therein lies the thing, because all I'm seeing is very good trailers, and oh, trailers on. are always good. This game is made by Marcus Leto. Okay, Halo. I, I'll give I, I, I'll give you that. Come on, I will give you that. No, I'll give you that. But so was Destiny. Oh yeah, but Destiny was terrible. Uh, well, de de Destiny, Destiny like died for that thing that you've been whining about last ten min uh, minutes. <sighs> Publishers. You see, when I first played Destiny, I was all in for it. But then I have never gone back to Destiny since. Destiny 2 got released. I never went back to it because it's just more of the same. It really is. I and I hope to God family. this integration isn't. It needs... This, this is going to be... Um, this. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this is going to be 
um, an FPS sort of um, RTS fucking game done right. Yeah, except... And um... from what I've played of Outer Worlds, because I got a key to that, and I still haven't done the review. <laughs> Don't tell G. Um, is... I've got the review. I haven't the, um, they're, they're borrowing heavily from other games and implementing them sort of right. And then that's what then makes... You know, one good game leads to another good game, yeah. and then they create a world around it, and then so on and so forth. I mean, case in point, Outer Worlds completely demolishes, in my view, Fallout 4. Fallout 4 shite. Yeah. Uh, Outer Worlds completely demolishes 76. 76 is shite. This could be well, for, uh, for the answer to 76. It's, just, it's dated. Uh, you see, Fallout 4 is dated. It's not bad. No, Fallout 4 shite. It's it's just Fallout 3 with a reskin. <laughs> you also like Battlefield, so, you know. Uh, look, I, I, I'll let you have that, right? Battlefield Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 are practically the same game. Oh, yeah, and the new one, the one that's free over on the PlayStation Plus. Uh, you mean... Um, Star Wars Battlefield. Oh, that's the new... That's, that's the... That's the it's Star Wars Battlefield's free on PlayStation Plus? Yeah, June. Oh, that's in, oh, that's in June right now. It's, I was going to say, hang on, isn't the Call of Duty World War Two? That's free right now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's a copies now, and um, there's another copies next week, next month. <laughs> the the thing is, the thing is, the I didn't. I went from Battlefield Four, and I've stayed on Battlefield Four, Battlefield One, Star Wars Battlefront One and Two, um, Battlefield Five. I didn't buy, and I haven't played any of them because it's the same damn game. Just different skins, and that does not a video game make. <laughs> we're, we're getting off topic Do you here. Think? Disintegration. Get it right, please. <laughs> and uh, our games in June just disintegrated. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we'll, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We, we'll go and scavenge some more up by uh, 16th of June, Danger Scavenger. This reminds me a lot of Hunt for Parasite. Oh, scavenger. It reminds me of Hunt Parasite. It really does. Um, different, different style. I, I must say, I prefer. Um, this is probably my bias showing, but I prefer the way the Hyper Parasite looks because it's very retro's eighty, and this is very slick, high def, sort of top down MMO, sort of um, League of Legends looking, in like a retro setting. Whereas Hyper Parasite, I'm, I'm different. Deliberately drawing a comparison to this because it's retro. Um, stayed with the sort of 80s look. Yeah. How the game felt, how the that game felt to play. Scan line with with the blocky bits. Um, you know, it, it, it was just full on 80s. Um, there was there was high def in there definitely, and it, it's a good game, dude. Oh, Parasite's a good game. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I do hope the Dangerous Scavenger. They're coming out on the 16th of June, by the way. 17th. I don't know if I mentioned that. 17th, 16th, thereabouts. Steam says 17th. Fix it. Okay, well, there we go. Something out then. It, um, it, Drac will fix it in, in post edit. He'll fix it. Uh, it I, I do hope it lives up to to that because, in, in my in my feeble, blind man eyes, for me, Hyper Parasite is the benchmark you have to reach to call yourself a roguelite. <laughs> uh -huh. nah, I, I, nah. I said that. I don't like the binding of Isaac, so get away with me with that stuff. <laughs> Bye. Just Bye. a note, because um, I have the Steam page open, and um, it just says one thing that matters to me. Similar to games you played, Reeve. Reeve is one of the best games I've played. I'm not joking, it's just... Ah, see, this, is, this is why video games are so good. It's all subjective. Oh. All of it. Reeve is... Video games are subjective. Reeve is awesome. I don't think so. You are a wrong in so many ways. <laughs> and I'm glad to be wrong because when I'm wrong, I learn. Mm. <laughs> so, G, we, we, we'll get off. We'll, we'll get off. Um, we'll get off. Um, uh, uh, sorry, my brain's just lost there. We'll get off Danger Scavenger, right? I do hope this this game actually makes it because it looks like a lot of fun. Proper retro is AT. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun from what I've seen the trailers and game pe gameplay pictures. Obviously, and the Steam page and whatever have you. It does look like a lot of fun, and 
it's probably worth a buy, but I'm going to wait for the reviews, as a lot of people do, and then go from the reviews and based on what's happened there. Um, they seem to be pretty good on the Steam. They do seem to have some good responses there, so um, I'm happy with it. Um, I, I have seen no faultage with it. Uh, what's this um, across the grooves, G, on the 17th of June? <laughs> oh, sorry, did I put one in that you have no idea what it is? You, uh, yes, you've 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 completely blanked me because I'm thinking about moving on to the honourable mentions. Yeah. Boom. Um, so across the grooves is a game that I've been following for a while because it looks like it's going to be very different and very beautiful in several kinds of ways. As the name goes, across the groove is when you slide a pig up over a record oh, record player. And yes, that's, that's sort of what it refers to. So it's it's a story of um, at least not entirely sure how you pronounce that because it's supposed to be in Bordeaux, in France. Um, she uh, finds a record from her ex-lover and she plays it, and she listens to it. And as you know, music brings back memories, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, but it turns out that she's gone back in time with this music. Um, when she stops listening to it and she's back in her time, things have changed. She has time travel with music. So that's sort of an interesting little mechanic. And all the music, I've been listening to whatever I could find. It's really nice. It's really good. There's some issues with um, the, how the music is mastered. <laughs> I have problems making out some of the lyrics. Let's just put it that way. But we're basically talking more visual novel than game. So, you know, a story that's presented to you, in this case, completely hand painted. Nothing fancy 3D graphics. I think I've seen this. It re it does remind me a little bit of the Wanderer. We saw Wanderer yeah. over at Res last year. It does remind me of that, where it's it's a visual novel, yes. and you get to walk through this this beautiful. I'm talking about the Wanderer now. This beautiful uh, water paint sort of scheme and system, and some of the artwork is fantastic. So it's like good lord. This is more of you know stills, still pictures. But they yeah, are yeah, yeah. they're really well made, really good. And as I said, um, why have action games all the time? Here's a an actual visual novel. I know that these things are popular now because of um, what is Netflix, Black Mirror. Do they have a sort of choose your own adventure thing there that people think is is the benchmark? But no, I think Across the Groove looks like from what is out yet because they've been kind of tight lipped. I blame Charlie; she's not telling me anything. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it looks like this will be really nice. It's sort of the best way I can describe it. Well, if it's if it's anything remotely like or similar to Wanderer, it's going to be fantastic yeah. because the Wanderer told the story of uh, Frankenstein's monster, if I'm not mistaken. Well, not Frankenstein's it, monster, Frankenstein's creature. Okay, free creature, no, monster, no, if you want to be PC, fine, No, because whatever. that's the whole thing, that it's not a monster. No, it's not a monster, it's a confused life form, and, yeah, it's, and it's essentially a child, and it got tread poorly from the start, but so that, therefore, because it was tread poorly, then it knows how to react is with violence, because it got tread with violence, so it responds with violence. But that's where I understand the Wanderer that. goes, I've read the book. The Wanderer goes completely back and takes that position. What if it's not treated in that way? I, exactly. I do very much like the story in The Wanderer. So mechanically, the games are quite different, but it is. I like story-heavy games, or visual novels, however you want to call this. And mm. I like the option that you can have multiple endings. Like, it, your decisions really influence the story, and that's what they're doing in Across the Grooves. For me, when it comes to games, and I'm, I know I'm going to be fucking bashed for this, but for me... Gameplay matters over graphics. Gameplay meaning storytelling. But gameplay and storytelling. Gameplay meaning um, conveyance. Gameplay meaning the ability to play the game with um, not minimal to little input, but through input that's not like 45 buttons just to move one step. You know, simple, intuitive input. So it's the experience. And they, uh, well, you can, you can say that. It need, the, the game needs to convey to you within the first few seconds of the playing the game how to play it. How I mean, I could talk about Mega Man. Was it Mega Man Ten? Was it Mega Man Ten? Within the first, within the first few seconds of playing Mega Man Ten, right? You could you could figure out the game straight away. Left, forward, jump, shoot, done. 
But then, you know, and that's coming from someone who, who played a lot of Mega Man, which was essentially jump, shoot, mm. forward, backward, you know, or fall. Forward and shoot. Falling. I, I hated the falling missions. They, I hated the falling missions. I really did. <laughs> anyway, moving on, moving on. Um, Across the Grooves, guys, 17th of June. Uh, as G said, looks like a lovely visual novel. It's going to be good because uh, G says it's good. <laughs> nah, trust G's. G's impeccable judgments. We've got one more honorable mention right now. This is from Cyanide and Happiness. Now, Cyanide and Happiness are web comics, and if you don't know what they are, please go watch them because they're completely off the wall, top shelf comedy humor. Terrible. That I quite terrible. Like. Nah, dude, it's not terrible. I've got to mention them because I feel. I feel they did us a good turn, how many years ago? Eight years ago? <laughs> Eight years ago? And from that good turn they did us, of course, we're going to mention their game. And I'm going to ask G to uh, inquire about their game that's coming out in uh, June, July. So please, G, inquire. Please. Okay. Because these people are comedians, man. Seriously. Completely mad nuts of comedians and this game reminds me a lot of the South Park sort of um, video games that came out nothing like them they're not going to be like turn based or whatever have you from what I can see it's like you say it's a webcomic it's going to play like a webcomic and the humour the humour's funny I like it so uh, I don't know much about the game but it's part one of a many part series hopefully and it looks like a lot of fun and uh, when it does release, I'm probably going to buy it and play it because it's Sarnard and Happiness. I mean, come on. <laughs> a video game, a web comics. Come on. <laughs> and no, I don't like trains. <laughs> Bam was told you had a minute because it's an honorable mention. <laughs> I blew that minute. <laughs> no, I've got to mention them because they did us a good turn many, many, many moons ago. They've probably forgotten. I haven't. But, uh, you know, got, got, to, got to go from there. So, a minute I, cl I clocked eyes on this, I've been following it, and I've got to, you've got to get involved, got to get their publishers in G, or, or, or the developers, and got to get them talking, G, because these guys, these guys are the shiz. They are the biz shiz niz. Anyways, people, whatever your fancy is in video games, I think June has a little bit for everything. We covered a little bit of Dark Wizards VR, yes. Command and Conquer, because Bam is still only, what, 17 years old? Uh, no. Evans remains Eight. because, again, it's a pat platformer with a heavy yep. Japanophile. Oh, that's not a nice way of saying it, is it? No, Jap that's not the right words. <laughs> it's not the right words. Inspired at all, by gee. Japanese anime? Yes. Good. Um, Main Assembly, our good friends over in Sweden. Prison Architect, if this is only a DLC because why are we coming to DLC again? I don't know. Space Gamagers going to early access. Desperados, Disintegration because. Bam wanted to talk destiny. Dangerous cameras <laughs> because Bam wanted to talk. This is going really well. Across grooves <laughs> going to the more visual novel y style and the honorable mm -hmm. mention that Bam had sixty seconds for cyanide and happiness. Terrible. In a good way. But no, terrible. No, 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 dude, seriously, cyanide and happiness. Seriously. They're they're funny as hell. Funny as hell. And you gotta go gotta go gotta go watch some of the comics. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Anyways, my Absolutely name is brilliant. G, but hey, you can call me Nisgressen. No, wait, it's the other way around. My name is Nisgressen, you can call me G. The other guy is Bam. He's been absolutely entertaining. <laughs> and we shall see you next week. Not Bam, because he doesn't get to be there next week. You get me and... I, don't, I, I was a bad boy, I don't get to do anything next week. <laughs> I think you're getting me and Jack talking about, well, audio Stuff. and pandemics. Yes. Right, guys, from myself, Bam Havoc, uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, I do have to say, at the end of this uh, episode, if you've managed to get this far, there's another podcast out there um, called Stoffel Presents. Um, Badger and Ed are out there talking to Slops Game Room themselves, himself, rather. And they go through a lot of discussion of how to start, how to, f how to maintain, and how to actually finish a video, as well as your presence on the networking side of things, the video side of things, and so on. And uh, I've got a bone to pick with them, because they did not ask Slops the beer and bacon question. I watched it twice, just to double check, and I didn't hear any beer and bacon questions, so I've got a bone to pick with them. <laughs> anyway, guys, from myself, <laughs> much love. See you guys soon.
Buenas dos gas. 